Hello, YouTube reseller mom here. Welcome to today's reseller news with Marcy. Hi, Marcy. How are you doing today? Good, good. It's been a really busy week, but it's been a good week. How are sales? Good. Yeah. Same here. Same here. I feel like they're picking up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have, I've got at least 20 tabs open. We've got a lot of things going on here. I did try to pull a bunch of resources to, to add in just some things that were good to know. And, and uh, you know, resources are always good. So we are going to dive into a bunch of news and hit probably all the main ones that you're thinking of that have hit this week. There's been some Amazon emails and some notifications, some page updates. It's been a little crazy on some of the updates because I don't know about you, but Amazon sends these letters and you're like, what? Uh huh. <laughs> what do you, what, what does that mean? Yep. The updates. Oh, hold on. Let's see. I'm going to mute that one. Get everything lined up now. My dog wants to sit on my lap. No, honey, you need to go. <laughs> Which dog is it? It's it's my little one. I swear, she likes to come and sit right when I'm doing something. But we'll do orders later. You can order. She's so later. sweet. She can do orders. All right. So you we're you put up a bunch and I put up a bunch and so mm -hmm. it's kind of got you you're starting off and then uh, we're gonna jump back and forth. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. So inventory lab, um, they're rolling it out in increments. So not everybody's going to be getting the change all at once. Um, but it's the changes are uh, had started July 7th. So if you use inventory lab, you may or may not have seen um, the inventory pages change. Um, I've not seen mine change, but I'm looking forward to it. Um, and they should be done rolling out by the end of the month. And what they're doing is they're doing it at uh, like 3 a.m. in the morning or something. So they'll take your inventory um, lab account offline and make the changes that they need to. But it's pretty cool if, um, scroll back up to the top for me up here. So are you able to zoom in at all? So when you look up your inventory right now, you know, it just kind of gives you the basic information about, you know, the title, the ASA, and what you paid for it when you bought it, that kind of thing. So now they're going to be including um, the, a picture of the item, which is awesome. Yep. So they're going to be including a picture of the item. Um, you can also, if you didn't know this already, you can do it in um, their mobile app. You can go and check your inventory status on a particular item. So like if you're in the store or something of that nature, you can um, scan the barcode to see how much of that item you have in stock already. Um, so it's going to be more mobile friendly, which is pretty cool. Um, and you can also scroll down and load inventory that way instead of having to batch it in. Excellent. Yes. So I have not played with the mobile app stuff. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. So I've done it from time to time, you know, sort of like, you know, if I see a, a Reebok tank top, you know, or something when I'm out sourcing, I'll be like, is that the one that I have in stock? And I have six of those already, or is that a different one? You know, that kind of a thing. Um, so it's, it's good for that. And um, so it gives you images, the condition. And then I thought it was pretty cool that you can now, um, if you see the little um, copy paste next to the ace in there and the search feature with the ace and you can do those. Ah. Yes. And then on the replenishment page. So if you like click open your inventory and it says you have one, but you just bought three more, you mm -hmm. can actually go in, um, even now, before the changes, you could go in and update that if you already had had batched that item before. Mm -hmm. But now what they're doing is they're um, adding notes. So if you scroll down a little bit mm -hmm. for me, right, right in here. Um, so like right this? there with the blue, yeah. So you can add notes in there and then the date and then whoever, you know, made the, the note is in there. So that's pretty cool. You know, so you could say something like, you know, like if you're doing um, wholesale orders, you know, order a hundred more on this date or like whatever mm -hmm. due to be in stock on this date, you know, things of that nature. That is good. Cause in inventory lab in my batch, you know, the title for your batch, I've been mm -hmm. doing like the store name and then, kind of the ETA on when I should expect it. 
Okay. Just because I'm tired of trying to look up the ship date and things like that. Right. But things yep. like that would be interesting because yeah. a lot of times they'll get back and they're like, oh, no, we should have it at the end of August or something. I'm not going to remember that. So right. I've got to flag it right. somewhere. Oh, and then I, I failed to mention, if you could scroll up just a tiny bit for me, mm -hmm. right there. Um, right. Yeah. See, do you see underneath the gremlins? It has tags, the oh. Halloween and the toy. Oh. So you, if you're using the your unlisted inventory feature, as I do, you can add tags. So I put like a tag in, like if it's back stock bin E1 or something, you know, I'll put a tag in there E1 or the date that I li that I put it in the back stock just to keep track, you know, different tags like that. Um, and then like they have Halloween here, I'll use the tag of like Christmas, but you can go ahead and do that to your... Um, as this rolls out to your inventory that is currently listed, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. So that's a new feature. They did have it in the unlisted, but now they're adding it to the listed. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Is that all? Is there any more to note about this one? No, I don't think so. I think that's pretty much it. I mean, you know, some of the stuff is a little bit more in depth, but. Hey, JR. Collaborative bulk edit replenishments. I haven't. Uh... This would be good if you're using like a third party or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't really look into that too much. Yeah. Okay. Well, the let's see here if we got, if this is going to work. Yes. Okay. Reimbursement policy. I don't know why this one is there. I thought this was in a different spot, but that's okay. The There's a new, hold on. Hold on. Let me pull it up. We had two emails come through. I will pop them up. I've got a bunch of tabs open, so hold on. I gotta find find the right one. I, oh, it's not gonna let me do it safely. But we had a safety communication come mm -hmm. through, and the other one was unallocated inventory to be assessed to your account. So you should have received those two emails. Yeah, and actually, I was gonna run that by you because did your unallocated inventory page? come with Chinese yes. and lettering that, on it too. And I was like, is this the real deal? <laughs> I've had that happen with Amazon stuff before. Okay. Because okay. I got a phone call from China the other day that I sent a voicemail too. And I was like, okay, that's really weird. And then I opened up that email. I saw this Chinese writing and I'm like, okay, <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> so, so basically with the, let me put our faces back up. Basically with the unallocated inventory, from what I've seen on the forums, everybody's like, oh, great. They're going to charge you back for found inventory. Mm -hmm. now. I thought they maybe found some inventory because I have that problem a lot. They yep. lose my stuff and I'm like, oh, maybe they found it. Um, basically, I don't know. It's a new step in the system or new thing in the system. And I don't think it's going to really have much of an impact, but it it could. Hopefully it will be, be better. Aware of. Mm -hmm. Um, I added this one, and I think I put the link to this down below. Hi, Max. Hi, Max. And it is the prepaid label stuff. So you know this. With Merchant Fulfilled, they mm -hmm. now, once once you return an item and it's scanned, it gets reimbursed right then. That's mm -hmm. it. Once it's scanned, it gets reimbursed. And so if you're interested in that prepaid, how the prepaid Merchant Fulfilling goes and all of that, that is the link. I'm going to pop it in the chat as well, just in case if I forgot down below. Um, the other thing that has been huge is they smacked down toys again. <laughs> Why? I don't know. But uh, let's see here. I'll do it like that. There's a lot of a lot of research and a lot of things done on here, but I wanted to walk through kind of just one. But you should have received an email like this. If it's a toy category, they're cracking down on the, it's called CPSC documentation, consumer product safety. You can go, the reason, the reason they're cracking down on here is because they sued Amazon. <laughs> um, like yesterday, was the 14th? 14th was yesterday. So yesterday it hit the news. You can go read about it. Again, this should be down below. Um, but, you know, at safety regulations and everybody's getting upset. So the end of the line is when the lawyers get involved, they come up with these things to check for safety compliance. Mm -hmm. Then we get hit with the grunt work. Thank you, Mary Beth. And Aww, thanks, Mary Beth. 
what is super not hilarious but you gotta laugh so you don't cry amazon is on some of the stuff that is requesting compliance paperwork and everybody's like you're on the listing don't you have the compliance paperwork <laughs> and, uh, uh, Meredith says, I'm just starting to get into selling on Amazon. I got my account and now trying to figure out best route to be online arbitrage. Hard to figure out what and when to source first. Well, that congratulations. Is yeah, congratulations. You just do a lot of research. It's going to be a lot of research. Um, so walking through this, if you, I did Lego as an example, because I know most of us sell Legos or would like to sell Legos. This will tell you about any recalls. If you just typed in Lego, you can see here that there was some Lego recalls. And then I popped it over here. You can search if you're looking for four things. You can search the CPSC. You need to have this CPSC documentation and then kind of the name and you'll find items. So I, I just decided to pull this one for... Um, for the idea today and grab this number 75292 and come over here. I Googled it. So I did save CSP, whatever that was. I'm going to mess it up. CS, C P S C plus the word Lego. And it brought me to the Lego site and you can actually punch in the number. You can go download the document and this is what Amazon is looking for. We have a we have an end to my rant here. <laughs> this is the kind of paperwork that Amazon is looking for. So you track it down. You can do it through the company site. You can email the company. You can call the company. You can call your manufacturer, your distributor, do a Google search. And even if you do all that, sometimes you still can't find it. I'll be honest. I have some that I still just can't find. You can pay to have the testing done. Uh, anybody who's doing OARA, I don't recommend that. But if you have 8,000 in stock, you may want to pay for testing. It's about 500 bucks. Amazon has some links of preferred testing facilities that you would send it off to. And if you're doing private label, that's probably the way you'd want to go. Anyhow, you're looking for, looking for this and then you'd submit that to Amazon and it would be good to go. The other thing to note is there is an appeal button. And if your item is not for children under 12 or 13, you can say it's not for children under 12 or 13. And that eliminates the need for that paperwork. So that's the, that's the consumer safety junk going on, which is super, <laughs> super annoying, but nonetheless. So let me circle it. back to Mary Beth real quick. You, um, mm -hmm. She was saying she's having a hard time figuring out, you know, what, what um, to source and where things like that is. And Lucy's correct, you know, just do a lot of research. Um, but, you know, look at the, look at the um, e-commerce e market trends and, you know, look and see which um, particular categories um, are growing the most. Like right now apparel is growing the most according to a study I read today. Um, but across the board, all e-commerce categories are growing. So just, you know, start, start with that kind of research. And the other thing to do um, that I would recommend personally is start with something that you enjoy, that you're comfortable with. Uh, Cause if you don't enjoy what you're selling or what you're researching, it's gonna, it's gonna make your business a little bit more difficult. So, so side, side tracking, I'll bring up the Lego page. Um, like I just, I had these laying around the house. I was using for an example earlier with a friend and uh, let's just say you want to see, you, you know, you have Sims three starter pack hanging around. Uh, you can go and scan and see what it's going for. Um, you know, like this is like a brand new copy is going for there, but you could do the same with used books, used books at the Goodwill or a library sales, free friends and family, anything like that. But you can scan and look up things all around your house. Yeah, I used to, when I started, and I still do it occasionally, is um, I just went through my pantry, went through my bathroom, went through any clothes that still had tags on them. Just, mm -hmm. you know, anywhere that I could find a UPC, I scanned mm -hmm. it. <laughs> and I just applied for everything, you know. And so you can look. 
at the Amazon, you know, obviously this isn't going to tell you fees and stuff, but you can get an idea if it's on there and what it looks like, etc. But mm -hmm. I, I would suggest scanning with the Amazon seller app. If you have a third party app, you can go to, you know, type in Amazon FBA calculator and you can go there and scan things. Uh, she says, so if you sell something, use books and things around the house, you don't need a receipt invoice. I'm just saying to get familiar with things. Um, not needing an invoice or receipt is a tricky question. If let's say I'm done with, I'm done with this book. I'm done with living successfully screwed up people. Don't ask why I have this. Book. <laughs> Can I have that book, please? I might send it to you. So, I'll pay so, for shipping. <laughs> so let's say that I did, you know, I'm done reading this book. I want to sell it. 99.9% .9 chance if you sell this as a used book, Amazon is not going to come after you for a receipt or invoice and you're pretty good to go. If it's in mint condition. Well, yeah. I mean, you can sell things that are... Well, you said new. Book. If you sell it as a new book. Yeah. Don't sell it as a new book because you don't have an invoice or receipt. Yeah. If you sell it as a used item, Amazon very little goes after... So, you know, goes, goes after them very infrequently. Right. Every once in a while, I've heard of like somebody knocking off a book or doing something really shenanigan wise and they've gone after them. I put it on Amazon. I'll buy it. Yeah. It's a good book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you know, some, you know, as you're doing your research, there are some listings that you can sell used like no. Um, so for, um, I mean, you know, a lot of clothes, not a lot, I'm sorry some clothing you can sell used like no um i don't personally sell anything that is really used i only sell it used like no if it still has the original tags for clothing mm -hmm. um but so but, we, could, we, we could probably do an entire entire uh topic on, on that but what anyway um what i was going to say but then other brands like um north face you know they don't like people selling their items as new because it's warranty issues. So like they reached out to me and said, you can still sell our items, but you have to sell it as used like, no. So. So what, what Marcy and I are saying though, is you got a lot of research to do. So like, if you just go around your house and scan things, you can say, okay, this is, you know, it's on Amazon. It's going for this price. Where could I buy it? Um, you know, just to get an idea of looking at the stats, not not necessarily to sell it, but you need to do a lot of research on. So when you do go out to the store, OK, I'm looking for these types of items or those types of items. You can do a lot of groundwork in your, in your home. Yeah. So, yeah, Mary Beth, you can do um, you can do um, FBA. Um, I started off as 100 percent FBA and then COVID hit and then I went to 100 percent. Merchant fulfilled, and now I'm about a five percent FBA and ninety five percent merchant fulfilled. So you can actually do both. Excellent. I'm gonna put this down below because I think this was just the thing to to sign up. Uh, oh yeah, that's um yeah. So I signed up this morning. So yay! I, I was signed so up. So go back to the page you wrote before because I didn't explain what what we were signing up for. I don't have it because I had to put in my information. Then oh. it went me. Oh, it. gotcha. Okay. So, well, let me let me just jump in. Let me see. Oops, I lost my notes on that. So, retail brew is, and actually, Mary Beth, you can get a lot of information from retail brew. Um, they do uh, like very um, simplified twice a week newsletters, and. They have a lot of information, a lot of um, a lot of um, like market analysis, but very simplified. And then they always have really good sources that you can you know click on the links and see like a detailed study on the item. So Retail Brew, if you're interested for anybody, my referral link, I think she popped it in there. Um, I mean, I don't get any money. I think I get points towards like a coffee mug or something. But um, anyway, it's just a really, really great resource for she's asking about Dollar Tree mm -hmm. and Dollar Tree. If you order online, you'll have a kind of a receipt. Receipts are fine. If you need to do chain of custody, receipts are not fine for ungating and IP claims. So I sell Dollar Tree stuff all the time. Um, 
and it's probably a good way to economically get some inventory and, and test some things out. So that'd be a good one to try. I got to read this one later. I'm going to watch, read this one about Shopify and TikTok integration. That's cool. All right, moving on. This was in the news yesterday or today. Can't remember. But uh, Johnson Johnson recalled Avino Neutrogena spray sunscreens for something that causes cancer. So this is going to be huge. Probably also affected their stock. Um, Johnson Johnson's gotten hit a couple times with stock, you know, bad things in the news that caused their stock to go up and down. Which we watch for that because when the stock goes low, that's when we purchase. <laughs> that a girl. This is what my thing is. This flags me to buy some Johnson Johnson stock, but that anyhow, that's a different topic, different show, different everything. <laughs> For Amazon, it flags me as like, oh shoot, do I have any of this stuff in inventory? And if you haven't been through a recall with Amazon before, they take your stuff and it gets destroyed. You don't really have to do anything about it. You don't have to worry about it. But um, you know how like if you dispose of products from your inventory in Amazon. It doesn't actually get disposed. It gets sold off in pallets. Recalled stuff will get disposed and they handle all the communication with your customers. They destroy the product and guarantee that it's destroyed. Um, as part of the person who I used to be on, on the recall team because I was a safety or quality manager. Anyhow, um, there was ways to document it and whatnot. But if you're curious, this is this outlines it down below. I think I have as well. If you are affected by that recall. I didn't have any. I was lucky. I was. <laughs> I don't think I have any either. <laughs> I might have some in my closet, though. So I need to go check my closet next. So this next topic I found through a retail brew that I was just telling you about. And the reason why it caught my attention, it's about how much, you know, more cardboard was being sold in 2020. But the reason why it caught my attention was because for people like Mary Beth that are looking at different sourcing opportunities, um, I thought that the growth potential of this was just amazing. So they said 2020 was a record year for the packaging industry as a whole um, because of, you know, the obviously, you know, COVID higher on line purchases higher demand for packaging materials well and you're not getting together anymore so you're shipping things what's that you're not getting together anymore so you're shipping right things. exactly exactly yeah. so but um bring this to mary beth's attention is um the packaging industry is expected to grow 3.5 percent each year for the next five years so long term that looks like a lot of growth mm -hmm. i mean that is minimum 15% growth from now to another five years. Um, and, you know, the demand is just going up and up. Yeah. Um, and they said 80% of online orders use um, corrugated packaging. So I don't know exactly what they mean by that. Like, it's not necessarily always a box. It might be, you know, like the comic books are sold, you know, with that bit of cardboard to keep them, you know, firm, things like that. So pajamas that have the cardboard in them so that you get... What's that? The pajamas with the cardboard. Yeah, them. exactly. Exactly. So I just thought it was very interesting and it could be, you know, a nice little honeypot for somebody. Yeah, definitely. Oh, you're welcome, Mary Beth. See, you were meant to be here. Hi, Yvonne. Hi, Yvonne. Nice to see you. Yvonne's doing so good. She finds such amazing things. If you ha don't follow her, you ought to, especially if you do eBay. I look at her stuff and I learn so much. I promptly forget it, but I... I look at them, like she always finds the coolest glassware and jackets and stuff. It's, it's neat. Okay, this one is a resource for you guys that somebody tipped me off to, and it is United Perfumes, and they said they use this place to get ungated for Disney, Adidas, oh, a couple other things. I can't remember off the top of my head now, but Mary Beth, if you were Looking for things to sell, this is kind of what I do. I go to the website. I, uh, for this one, I just typed in Adidas, and I'm looking, and I'm like, okay. Usually, you want to source or sort from cheapest to most expensive, um, if that makes sense for you. That's usually how I'm sourcing. <laughs> and then, uh, let's see here. What is this? Okay, so I click on the item, and I'm going to see what it is. This one is nice. It's got a UPC. But you can do this for Safeway, Target, Walmart, 
Walgreens, Rite Aid. I mean, I've got like 50 places I go and source from. Probably more than 50. Way more than 50. But anyhow, you're going to find the item and you're going to find it over on Amazon for sale. You're going to see if it's a good buy. Now, obviously, this one for $5.50 and it's selling for $5.38. Not a good buy. You want to buy low, sell high, not buy high, sell low. Really? Yes. I've been wrong the whole time. <laughs> So, but this would be for if you want to get gated in Adidas, you could buy 10 from that website and use that as an invoice to get ungated over on Amazon. My husband might wear that Adidas. <laughs> no. Dynamic Pulse. How did they come up with these names? What are you wearing today? Dynamic Pulse. I'm going to get ungated in Adidas. Are you not? I thought you were. I'm not. Oh, Nike well, either. Go. I just did it for you. Now all you have to do is go buy 10 of these. Exactly. That's why so, I think my husband will wear them. I mean, this is this is pretty cheap. Whatever it'd be like 50, 60 bucks. You may need to order more for their minimum. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. I have to look at their minimum oh, and shipping minimum and all that. Ah, uh, yeah. 350 minimum, which is really not that bad, but you could do Adidas and a bunch of the Disney stuff and yeah. whatever else. Yeah, so I'll have to go in there and play and you know see if I can find stuff that is a moneymaker. Yeah, they had um, let me see here, they had all these brands. Vera, 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 Vera Wang, Dior, Hugo, uh, Coach, Chanel. I like Marc Jacobs. Yeah. I, and if you need some perfume, I, now that I have so many sites like this, it's like Christmas shopping is much easier. <laughs> <laughs> Buy some for you, sell some. Everybody's happy. All right. I was interested in this. I don't have Sam's Club anymore, but I do when I go down to Vegas. I'm so excited about this. I hope they bring it to my area. So what they're doing is Sam's Club, of course, you know, they're trying to compete with Costco. Mm -hmm. And it seems like Sam's Club has a, um, like a more of a digital edge than Costco does, you know, just from the little bit of research that I did. And again, I found this through um, Retail Room. So what Sam's Club is doing is they're kind of taking online to a, in a different way. So what they're doing is you can go, now they're only testing this at three select stores right now. None of them are in my area, unfortunately. But what you do as a customer is you go in and you scan the items onto your app. And then you have Sam's Club deliver it to your home. So you don't have to take out those three cases of water to your car, lug them from your car into your front door. So they literally deliver it to your door after you've purchased it in the store. That sounds like it would be really great for weddings, baseball games, whatever. Like when for we anything. And on top of it, um, I'm a plus member or whatever they call it. What, what do they call that? A, yeah, plus member, which I think is like a $45 fee a year. And that just gets you a couple extra little perks, but it gives you free delivery. So and it would give you free delivery with this as well. So, you know, when I need a case of Monster or I'm in the store, I scan it and I have them bring it to my house. So like, let's say I, I want to go to Sam's on my way out to sourcing. You know, I can go into Sam's, shop for what I need you know, 20 pounds of cat food or whatever, you know, <laughs> and then go about my day and then have them deliver it to my house. That does sound really neat. And it'd be good for anybody who has stairs or struggles or like when I had foot surgery, it was difficult to do anything that was bigger than you yeah, know, it, it's still, I liked it because it still gave you the brick and mortar experience, mm -hmm. which I love. So that's one reason why I do retail arbitrage over, away you know because i love being in the store i love being around people and you know discovering new things everywhere so you know it's not it's it's not um again it's a, in a beta phase it's so they're not honoring it for everything in the store so they're gonna you know eventually like roll out mattresses so you can get free mattress delivery and you know cribs and you know all that big bulky stuff they were talking about play sets you know, I mean, how awesome is that? Because then you don't have to, you know, go and rent a U-Haul. <laughs> and that's really nice because, like, most of my family's down in Vegas, right? And when my brother got married or had their kid or whatnot, 
they could have shopped with somebody at a store and then just paid for the, you know, had it delivered to their house. Right. Right. Yeah. So I just thought it was really cool. And I thought, you know, this might, this might be a little bit of a competition for Amazon in the long run. We'll see. We'll again, see. people get that brick and mortar experience, but they don't have to do the work. And actually I, the, in the, um, I failed to write down the person's title or name, but, um, but somebody in, in the article that I read said, I would probably put more things in my cart if I didn't have to haul it home. And ain't that the truth? <laughs> yes. It's hard to do the plants and the groceries. Yeah. It, it's like, so much easier, you know, if you need to get, you know, your case of toilet paper and paper towels and, you know, all of well, this. That's a whole cartload right there. Mm -hmm. Exactly. The whole exactly. And then, like I said, throwing the 20 pounds of cat food. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of the Amazon rotating, del you know, monthly deliveries, right. all the big stuff. Right. Because I, you know, if I go to the store, that's my whole cart right there. Yeah. Let me um, spin back for just a second. I think we we put up that that link for the. Um, oh, stop! I didn't write it down for the um, little seminar thing next week. Did, we didn't talk about that. Did you put up the link for it? It's, I think you did. No, we haven't talked about a seminar. The the, the um, it was on it's on Tuesday through Retail Brew. No. Oh, okay. I had it in the list, but I don't want to even have it in my notes. So off the top of my head, there it is. Hey. <laughs> it, was the next, it was the next page. Found it. Um, yeah, so they have these little seminars called the checkout. And uh, the next one is going to be on the 20th, which I think is Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday at 1230 my time Eastern. And one of their, it's only like for a half an hour or something, but one, it, it grabbed my attention because one of the guests is going to be the senior vice president from ThreadUp. Interesting. Yeah. So I'm always interested in what ThreadUp's doing. Yeah. I'm, I'm selling things slowly over there, but I don't need to do anything. So yeah, exactly. That's kind of where my dead inventory goes. I don't. <laughs> If it qualifies, you make, you make pennies, pennies on it. Yep. Yep. Although I did sell a shirt over there, and for some reason, I, knock on wood, I don't know if they screwed up. For some reason, my payout for that shirt was like twenty-seven bucks, and it was just Nanette Lapore was you know the brand name. It's not like a huge huh. name, so I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Let's see. When I miss Mary Beth, I do well with buying golf club head covers. Found in my local golf courses. It's awesome, but that is a great brand. Yeah, I'm really curious about that golf club. What are, what are they called? Covers? Head I covers. I don't know if you can sell them used. Yeah, you'd probably have to look at the individual listing. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I want that one. <laughs> oh, I like the bulldog too with the cigar. Aww. Oh my gosh. That is terrible. But yeah, I mean, you can look at the individual listing, you know, if you're able to find it in there and then um, through Seller Central, do the add a product and pop in the UPC or the ASIN and see what conditions you can sell it under. <laughs> All right. Oh, this one's yours too. Strained holiday seasons. Wait, well, yeah, that might be old. I don't remember that one. That might be. I don't know. But yeah, that's from 2020. We can delete that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I did. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. This, is this one old too? This one looks yeah. better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I'm uh, yeah. I'm I'm out of topic. Okay, I went down the list. I added everything. Oh wait, no, I added this one. Okay. So, yeah. So I found sizechart.com, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, so, you know, if you ever want to check the sizes on your stuff, um, you know, like, let's say you keep getting the same tank top back because it didn't fit right, but everything else is selling just fine. You can, you know, measure. This, this is one of the reasons or one of the ways I thought I would use it. You can measure and see, is that item actually true to size? 
Um, or like my daughter needs new jeans. So I want to check my inventory and see if I have anything for her. So I'm going to measure her later on today and then I'll pop it, you know, look at the size chart and see what sizes, you know, would be ideal for her. Well, and you could take. And you can copy, and, or copy, copy this, this information and, you know, put it in your listing, for example, if you don't have the merchants, you know, you can say that it's kind of a generic, you know, do, you know watch your verbiage on it, but. Yeah, so I thought there was a lot of ways you could use it. And if I'm, I mean, I think they even have ring sizes on here and um, shoe sizes, hosiery sizes. So, yeah, I just thought it was really interesting. Oh, they got conversions. Yeah, conversions. So we've got... So a, a 24 waist in is a 28. Okay. So yeah, yeah, this would be very handy if you are selling any international clothes or need to, to do that. I bookmarked it. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of different ways you could use it. Definitely. Copy and paste that so you guys can have it. I think it's down below too, but copy and paste as well. Okay, I want to talk about private label centers for a bit because I'm doing some research and I thought I'd add that in here. I have three prep centers, not private label centers, three prep centers and then a list of prep centers for you guys if anybody is looking for a prep center. But I've been researching these and I um, thought I would pass that information on. Prep Ninjas is kind of cool because they tell you all of the pricing right here. Nice. Like, it's so nice. Some have, this one's kind of a complex price, but they have everything. So it's like, you can totally order whatever you want, which is what I would be looking for. Basically, oh, they do photography. Yeah. They do photography. They can receive pallets. Um, everything's listed out. So if you need extra stickers or anything, you just add it up and you can. Yeah. They even do it. product videos. Mm-hmm. If that's wow. in marketing, um, custom packaging. But what I like is as I get into private label, they have gift box kitting. So if you're putting together gift boxes, if that's your thing, they, they could do that. So I really like this nice. place. Precision Prep. I've had Kimmy, who runs this, uh, on my channel before. She's really nice. I, I do like, like her, but they've got pricing and services. Can go there. They do prep work, OA, you know, so they've got an application fee, they've got polybagging, non-polybagging shoes. Kind of got to see what, what kind of services do you need and what would mm -hmm. work for you. Cajun prep is done by Paul and I'm part of his Facebook <laughs> group too. Mary Beth, that would be phase six for me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm not even there yet. But. I like Mary Beth's humor they've got you know everything listed out here so you could see that but then i was finding these guys the online selling experiment they have um a whole list of prep centers that you can go and get so even more and that again link is down below and they've got the list here wow so there is a ton of different prep centers if you're looking for one that doesn't have sales tax or handles volume or sp specify specific to shoes or mm -hmm. whatnot the one that's closer to you because of shipping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could do that. Or, I mean, there's just all sorts of different ways you can use that. So I came across those. I was looking at those and I flagged them all. And uh, I got to research what I need and what would be best. And you don't have to use just one. You could use several depending on what, what you want to do. Anyhow, I thought that was interesting and wanted to bring that up for you guys. Very cool. Yeah. Oh, Spokane. I saw one up in Canada. There we go. This one's near me. If you are looking to run a prep center, you may want to get some ideas. I saw that too. Somebody said, let's just start a prep center. I thought about that about a year into Amazon. And then I was like, mm, nope, I'm good right now. COVID happened. Yeah. 
remind me later. Mary Beth says you are so full of wealth and knowledge. Thank you. You are so. Yay. Uh, Hi, Ariel. Ariel says, let's see here. Let's put her thing on here. Maybe a silly question. It's not a silly question, but although I've been selling for over a year, I can't figure out how to manually update inventory stating that I will not be restocking. I just did a video on that to bulk do it, but go in there and hit hide um, or you delete the item. You can also close it too if you just close it. So close it or go in and hide it. And that's that's pretty much it. Yep, totally agree. And when she's talking about hiding, I'm, I'm assuming Ariel knows, but just for anybody else, um, when you hide your inventory, um, what Amazon does when you do FBA is they recommend what you should send as a replenishment. And if you don't send it, then it impacts your inventory performance index, also known as an IPI. Um, so if you don't hide it, you can, you know, you hide it in there. If you don't hide it, Amazon thinks that you're eventually going to send it and you never know. Mm -hmm. I hope that made sense. Exactly. Uh, cool. This is the one that I just, I now. You know I am a sucker for poly mailers. No, so this is retired, retired patterns. This is not poly mailers. Oh, I thought they were poly mailers. No. Dang. So this is, you know, we were talking <laughs> earlier about learning. And you got a lot of lear a lot of learning. Like the amount of knowledge is just ridiculous. This is just Vera Bradley retired pattern. So if you sell Vera Bradley and you're wanting to see what the pattern is called or whatnot, you could have this bookmarked and go and, and uh, find the pattern. But little things like that, because I've sold Vera Bradley before and sometimes knowing if it's a new pattern or an old pattern is helpful. But also like coach, coach has different patterns on the inside of their purses, whether they go to the regular coach store or the outlet store. So if you're going to sell coach products and you try to sell something high, high end and it's an outlet outlet pattern, um, real coach people are going to know that. So there's just every brand has its own knowledge to it that you're going to have to research. Uh, Ariel says, what if one of the items that is on the way to Amazon that I hide by mistake? Um, that's fine. Hiding it doesn't really do anything. Just tells Amazon that not to bug me about restocking it. If you close it, you just relist it. And if you delete it, then you have to go in and add a product and match up your SKU to the new list, you know, to the new listing. You just add a product. And when it goes like the product information, copy your SKU over from that over and make sure the SKU matches up and everything else. And yeah. you're good to go. It yeah, if you accidentally, yeah. If you accidentally close it or delete it, it'll go under your stranded inventory. You can just fix it right there. No, you have to go <laughs> add a product. Sometimes you can. Mine gets stuck. Well, I do um, my stranded inventory mm -hmm. and then I fix stranded inventory and relist. See my relist won't link up the SKU. And, oh, and sometimes it goes error, error, and I have to go to add a product and add, you know, copy the ASIN gotcha. over and then add it and then copy the SKU over and it's a pain in the butt. And I, it's been broken like that for four or five weeks now. Every once in a while I can click re relist, but it gives me this weird error. I don't know. They're messing too much with the system this year. Honestly, <laughs> the amount of changes. And let me tell you. Jeff Bezos is going to the space next week. Just leave him there. Just I was going to say, stop <laughs> messing up, take a vacation up there for a while. <laughs> if Amazon could do focus on like a rescue mission or something like that and leave us alone for like a month, I could do like a month break. <laughs> Just, my God, leave me pee. I swear every other day I'm waking up to an email that's like just something going on. And I'm like, leave, just quit messing and with, the system. Yeah. We so, just need some stability for a little while. Yeah. Yeah. And and I'm fine with making a change, but make the change and then let the system kind of catch up. Get used to the change for a minute. Because they're not, <clears throat> they're not used to it. And they, they monkey one thing and it breaks three others. Like all IT. And I'm I'm just <laughs> yeah, I'm frustrated with everything. I um I had I'm redoing my Shopify store and going with Sellbrite. So I've been learning that platform this week and I'm not, I'm not good at learning new tricks. I really, really is irritating. 
And so I divorced uh, said commerce is who I was with last the last previous year. Uh-huh. I do not recommend them. And I don't I don't say like a whole lot of not recommending people live because it's, I don't want to, you know, say negative things right. about, about others just because I had a bad experience doesn't mean that everybody's going to have a bad experience. But anyhow, so been learning new things there. And then I had a, I had an Ikea order show up and they gave me somebody else's stuff. So I'm dealing with that. What about you? What other what other things have happened with you this week? Well, this week, I have to tell you, I'm very proud of my son who is now 13, just turned 13. So we have, which is super cool, we have the um, U.S. Tennis Association. The world mm-hmm. campus is three miles from our house. What? So he's, yeah, isn't that cool? Does your son uh, play? Huh? Does your son play? Well, he's taking lessons for the first time today. So, <laughs> or not today, I'm sorry, this week, excuse me, this week. Mm-hmm. So I'm just really excited. It's been a, it's been a really cool, cool experience. They've got like, they seriously, they have 62 courts there. Um, they have some clay courts, they have pickleball courts. It's just, it's just so awesome. And I um, went around the um, pro shop today. And what I did is, I, and this is another tip for, um, for Mary Beth too, is I took pictures of the different labels, you know, the different brands I had never heard of before. So I can bring them home and research them. So, um, Mary Beth says, what do you like to resell the most clothes? (laughs) Lucy turned me on to clothes two years ago and I had just been fast forward ever since. Yes. Now I love clothes too, but I thought I would do just a couple of things so we can we can look at that too. So some of the things I do just to get ideas and see what other people are doing. Um, let's type in let's type in bras. Be a little bit more specific. So you can go through bras or through you know I typed in was well, back to school and just see what's you know what's going on what what's for sale what would be good. Um, different ideas, top picks, like somebody did this kit, which is a pretty cool little kit. This would be somebody that had done a school kit and they're putting all this stuff together. So they're probably getting it wholesale. They're getting all the little pieces, putting it together um, and doing things like that. And they have a little private, they've, they've branded themselves. Unless a trail maker, I don't, is that a real brand or is that a, person like us, Marcy. Have you ever I, I'm sorry, I was reading the comments. What did I miss? <laughs> I was trail, trail maker. Is that a is that a I've brand run or is it, it just before? Brand? I've not seen it before. Okay. Me neither. Yeah, that looks like they do little kits. Yeah, maybe they're their own brand. They could be. Anyhow, I uh <clears throat> sourcing like that look at different things scroll down here see what the other ones are like this you could probably find this at every office store you know notepads that you just take take and put a few to a pack Mm -hmm. so you find those for i don't know 50 cents a buck put them all together into a poly bag and sell them now this is pretty cheap 8.99 i was gonna say i don't know if they're making much money on those probably not i mean they might have a really good wholesale account here we go. This one's a little bit better. Four colors of all the same. So, you know, you go to your local store, whatever, you find items like this. When I was starting off, I mean, office products are just really easy to do and good, good money. When you are feeling a little bit more comfortable, um, bras are definitely something and start by scanning and see which ones you're open to. I love Playtex. I love Fruit of the Loom. What do we got here? Haynes, Maiden Form, Bali, Calvin Klein, any of those. So get familiar with the brands and then get Tommy familiar. Hilfiger bras are good for me too. Which one? Tommy Hilfiger. Yeah, Tommy bras, Calvin Klein. So like Bali, you aren't going to be able to sell. That's going to be a gated. But Playtex, you should be able to sell. So figure out which ones you can and then go scan the ones you can. Because uh, it's 
I don't want to say it's irritating, but a lot of people go in and they're like, I can't scan this. I can't scan that. Okay. So figure out which brands you can sell. Go focus on those and just scan those. Like go scan all the Playtex. If you know you can sell Playtex, go scan all the Playtex and then, you know, figure out what's good. Don't scan ones that you can't sell. That'll be very irritating. <laughs> like uh, Dockers. I skip all the Dockers every time I go to calls and it's, it's I'm like, Err, but I'm not going to sit there and, and try scanning them. I just get frustrated. Yeah. Mary Beth, you can totally do this. I'm top rated. I'm sure Lucy is too on eBay. And you know, if you're, if you got good customer service on, or you, if you got good customer service on eBay, is, I mean, you just got to keep following Amazon's rules and you'll be okay. Mm -hmm. You know, keep up the customer service skills as far as, you know, your packaging goes and handling time and all that, which obviously, you know, you have that down being a um, top seller. Yeah, definitely. Ariel is ungated and Nike can't get Tommy. Yeah, keep trying. Keep really? Trying. Knock on wood. I hope like, my Tommy doesn't go away tomorrow. <laughs> I love my Tommy stuff. I see, see the bras. I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you had already said her preferred seller. So, yeah, you already know how to pack and ship things. Anyhow, all right. What else is going on this week? I'm trying to think any other news. We're that doing. We're doing. Um, um, it's a place called Drive Shack, so we can go out and hit golf balls. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. It's um, it's digitally based. Mm -hmm. So they have. I think I had explained this like the year before COVID, and I guess that would have been 2019. We did it, so we're doing it again this year. It's a. Um, it's three floors and the. It's three fours of tees, golf tees, and it's open to air and you hit the golf ball and it digitally tracks your golf ball, like the distance and speed and all of that. And you can play, you know, different games together, like, you know, trying to get closest to wherever on the field and stuff. So we've been doing that in the evenings. Nice. So it's a lot of fun. This is nice spending time with my kids again. <laughs> Sometimes. When they like me and not asking me for too much. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to find things. Yeah, as far as Amazon news, I think we're all caught up. I'm trying to see. So sometimes I do, I do sourcing kind of like this. We'll see if I can do some on the line here, but like we're on Walmart and see how it defaults to best sellers. I'll go price low to high. So that way I get any of the clearance items first. So we've got third graders are number one white pencil. Oh, I want to select now that Walmart has everybody selling on it. I only want walmart.com because you don't want to buy from a third party system on any anything. And then uh, they've got like crazy art. Now crazy art has problems to it. You don't want to do crazy art, but here we go. We've got these. Okay. Can't highlight composition rule books. So I'll copy the title, go over here. We found it here, but we want to sell multiples, right? So they've got a 12 pack there. We've got a four pack here. So let's just pretend this matches up. I didn't, didn't check to see. It's a little bit different. So you'd want to match up the picture, but we're going to pretend it matches for just purposes of this video. It's 50 cents here. It would be $2 then for this one. And this would be then profitable at $10.99. So then you'd go to Walmart and you'd buy however many you want, get them delivered from Walmart, then go list them as that four pack mm -hmm. over on Amazon. So you could do that all day long with any website you want. It's it's tedious. And yeah. Well, I've when you're doing merchant fulfilled, you know, you have to take into consideration the shipping costs, which for that's going to be more than a pound. Um, but, you know, for if you wanted to do an FBA, you might it might make money depending on what the fees are related to that listing. Mm -hmm. Ariel suggests a bolo group. I am part of a bolo group. It's not open. Um, and there are some, I'll, I'll think about that. I don't I'll know. be happy to pay for it. <laughs> God bless her. I, so I, I 
tend to shy away from things on Facebook, but I think we, I might be building like a resource website just to keep all my resources straight Ooh. and stuff. But that's an idea for end of <clears> the <throat> year, maybe. Uh, anyhow, Facebook, sometimes people are just drama. I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't do the drama. That's uh, why we, I don't go on social media other than your channel every two weeks. Yeah. I, uh, oh, and we're here on, uh, always forget to mention it at the beginning. Yeah. We always do that. So hit the thumbs up. And then also we're here on the first and third Thursdays of the month at four o'clock Eastern time, one o'clock Pacific. So we are back on the 5th of August. Yeah. It'll actually be three weeks from now. So a lot longer. Do I ever send chairs to FBA? I've done chairs once and they were small, like little toddler chairs, big chairs. I don't cause it's just, it's big and I don't have the room to do that. Chairs are like, you could find some really cheap chairs. We were at, uh, I've had company in town. That's why I haven't been online hardly at all. We went to Office Depot. I recycle my toner cartridges there. But, um, and they'll also, they'll take a copy of your immune card and your COVID card and laminate it for free if you're part of their system. So I got that done. My son was looking at new computer chairs and he's like, oh, I really like this one, but it's 150 bucks here. I said, take a picture of the UPC code and look it up. You know how to do that. Oh, it's on sale for $44 on Amazon. <laughs> there you go. I mean, I hate to do that, but if stores are going to charge three times the price, I I, I, I want to support local businesses, but a hundred dollar difference on a well, you know, sometimes on Amazon, though, you are supporting a local business. It's a yeah, little mom and pop. But anyhow, my point is, is that these people that do chairs a lot, they send them big and they send a lot of pallets and trucks to make the shipping worth it. I'm I'm more small scale, so I'm not sending in pallets and pallets of, of things. So yeah, we're meeting back here on the 5th of August. That will be exciting. And uh, I don't really have anything else going on. I just got my pallet delivered in the garage. Yay! I two pallets. I'm now up to ordering two pallets at a time. I wouldn't know how to send them either. <laughs> and by the way, your name, the gaming homie, I am going to borrow that and rename my 13-year-old. <laughs> my, my little... My little girl is called uh, Pwn Noobs. And if you're a gamer, you know what that means. But she's a, uh, that we have all sorts of fun games. And then we, my, one of my, my new worker, we are named the large, we name our printers around here. We got Drexel the XL is what she is. So. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have a little bit of fun, right? Always. All right. I, right? Don't, I don't have anything else to say. So we are going to wrap it up. I think I got all the links down below, so we should be good to go there. And I hope everybody has a good, good week. Are you doing anything after work here? Or are you done for the day? Just going to go hit some golf balls. Nice. Very, very good. Enjoy. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done for a lot of things. I got computer work to do, so what are we doing? All right, guys. I will talk to everybody at... We'll be back. There we go. That's a better thing to say. We'll be back <laughs> August 5th. <laughs> All right. <laughs>